the presentation from uh, Dr. Hatsilaku. She is joining us from Zoom because uh, she had a, a cold, I believe, Hatsilaku, and uh, unfortunately she can't be with us. But that's the, the beauty of technology, she can be with us in, in Zoom. Hello, again, dear partners of the Invalis Project, dear participants, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Natur Natural Environment and Climate Change Agency, I would like to welcome you all to this final dissemination event of the Invalis Project. Invasive alien species, as already mentioned, are among the five most important primary drivers of biodiversity loss, together with habitat loss, pollution, overexploitation of resources, and climate change. The Invalis project has brought together seven partners from seven different regions of the European continent to share their different levels of experience and knowledge in order to improve policies that address the challenges posed by invasive alien species to our natural environment. One of the many outcomes of the Invalis project has been the formulation of action plans by the project partners and the results of their implementation will be presented today in later sessions. NECA undertook the task of drafting the Invalis action plan for Greece the action plan was based on an analysis of the current situation of invasive alien species management in Greece, on the transfer of good practices that were communicated among the partners and invasive alien species stakeholders, and on the conclusions derived from the communication among these partners experience meetings and forums for open discussion that took place within the frame of this project. In fact, I also participated in some of these forums and greatly improved my understanding of the magnitude days ahead of us. The action plan identified that basic gaps in invasive alien species management in Greece are mainly in the areas of public awareness concerning these species and networking among bodies involved in IAS management. This concerns a wide spectrum of entities, ranging from public bodies to scientists, to research centers and universities, to local authorities, to farmers, livestock breeders, and to local societies. NEC, on the other hand, has among its tasks to coordinate the implementation of national policy for protected areas, which includes policy for invasive alien species, to carry out research and to ensure application of good practices in its area of jurisdiction, formulating proposals for the utilization of acquired expertise. And this also applies to the Invalis project results, to draft plans for the protection of, of protected areas, and their conservation and to cooperate with the competent authorities and organizations for their implementation, to organize information dissemination, awareness raising and education activities on protected areas and of course their threats. Therefore, NECA through its 24 decentralized protected areas management units that cover the entire Natura 2000 network and other protected areas combines all the necessary elements to contribute to the implementation of the Ministry of the Environment and Energy's policy through a decentralized, coordinated and focused application of the good practices and recommendations on the Invalis project regarding invasive alien species in the entire Natura 2000 network in Greece, whether terrestrial or aquatic. Furthermore, NECA, NECA will share the knowledge gained from this coordinated approach with all interested parties in order to improve the effectiveness of policies and actions against the propagation of invasive alien species in European territories. With my wishes for a very successful event, I thank you all very much for your attention. 
entries of the last group. And now we will move on uh, with uh, the overview of the valid uh, key results from Aglaia Gurda from Promea. Thank you very much uh, for uh, the invitation that I got from uh, uh, NECA and this wonderful cooperation that we had these years. I would like to thank Camille from uh, JS joining us today here in person. And of course, uh, all of uh, Invalis partners who are participating either in person or virtually. Thank you all. So I will present the key results of the project. It has been a long journey. It is uh, nearly uh, ending now. Um, so let's begin. Um, if you can see my presentation. No, this is this it's me. This is the one. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So the introduction of of invasive alien species is a major threat to the biodiversity and natural ecosystems of Europe. The extent of the impact has been severe, so severe that invasive species are considered the second biggest menace for biodiversity after habitat destruction. Their environmental impact can range from single species interactions and a reduction in individual fitness of native species to population declines, local extinctions, changes in community composition, etc. Invasion has also economic and human health implications. Evidence showed that invasive species cause damage worth of billions of euros to the European economy every year. There are more than 10,000 alien species present in Europe's ecosystem, and the rate of new introductions has accelerated. And this is due to increased international transports of goods and foods, including tourism, the, inten the intentional introduction of foreign species for economic reasons, the increasing vulnerability of ecosystems resulting from pressures such as habitat loss, degradation, fragmentation, overexploitation, and climate change. In valleys regions addressed multifaceted challenges related to EAS management. Lack of awareness about EAS impact on biodiversity and ecosystem services, low level of cooperation between public authorities and local stakeholders for the implementation of operational programs, conflicts of environmental and socioeconomic um, interests. Now about the project's aim, the specific project, the specific objective of the project was to improve the implementation of regional development policies and programs, and in particular, the investment for growth and job, growth and jobs in the field of the protection mm -hmm. and development of natural and cultural heritage. In this context, Invalis aimed to improve policies on biodiversity and environmental protection by supporting policy measures for the prevention, the early detection, control and eradication of invasive alien species in natural ecosystems. The project allowed public authorities to share practices for evaluating natural ecosystems vulnerability to biological invasions, managing invasive alien species introduction, mitigating associated environmental and socioeconomic risks. The overall objective is to support Invalis partners. The IA project is under priority access for environment and resource efficiency, and specifically other objective 4.1, improve the implementation of regional development policies. It started in 2018 and is going to end in May 23, almost one year to finish the project. The total funding was 1,394,000 euros, and the funds were from ERDF and from national funding. 
about the consortium, about the partners of Invalis project. Invalis has joined from seven countries, Greece, from NECA, from Italy, Lombardy Foundation for the Environment, from Spain, Regional Ministry for Environment and Rural and Agricultural Policies and Territory, from France, Corsican Agency of Environment, of course, from Romania, uh, Bucharest Ilvov Regional Development Agency, and from Portugal, Institute of Sciences, Technologies, and Agroenvironmental of the University of Porto, and from Latvia, Zegmale Planning Region. These are the seven partners of the project. Now, in Valis, addressed the following policy instruments, each from one country. From Greece, the Managing Authority of Transport Infrastructure, Environmental and Sustainability, Sustainable Development Operational Program, addressed the policy instrument for transport infrastructure, environment, and sustainable, sustainable development operational program. From Italy, Lombardy region addressed the ROP ERDF 1420. From Spain, from Extremadura, uh, uh, Regional Ministry for environment, for environment and Rural Agricultural Policies and Territory addressed the ERDF Regional Operational Program Extremadura. From France, uh, the operational program ERDF ESF Corsica 1420. From Romania, the regional operational program. From Latvia, operational program growth and employment. How we worked for these years, for almost six years, we managed to combine two pillars, two fundamental areas. The thematic areas that we used and we worked on all together is several issues such as comparative analysis of the territorial, territorial policies on EAS management, dimensions determining in valid natural ecosystems of vulnerability to EAS, and together, and, and some more, of course, like the territorial needs analysis, and together with some public uh, efforts and dissemination efforts that we did, throughout these years, public consultations, stakeholder meetings, and several policy briefs, we managed to get the results that enable us to exchange the uh, knowledge and experience that we gained through all this mechanism, to have policy lessons, and finally to deliver the action plans, which were uh, at the end of the project. Uh, and now we are uh, facing it and we are implementing it. Now, uh, the desired impact of the project uh, stands uh, for, three, uh, for three main um, reasons. The increased capacity of 200 staff of public administrations to effectively implement EAS management policies, 10 million euros unlocked to support projects for increasing natural ecosystems resilience to EAS and to carry out control actions for high priority species, and the third impact we uh, achieved and we aimed to do that was the increased awareness of over 1,000 stakeholders about EAS impact on biodiversity, economy, and human health. Uh, all partners worked together and learned from each other and delivered four research activities. Comparative basis, baseline analysis of territorial policies on EAS management, good practice guide on successful EAS management practices, common baseline analysis on the organizational and implementation needs of territorial authorities, and a report on factors that determine the variability status uh, of the participation, uh, participation regions. How we achieved all this with lots of effort and work by implementing and uh, carrying out uh, three um, workshops, and not only that, we will see uh, later on what else has been done. So our partners implemented three uh, major workshops 
uh, in Romania, in France, and in Latvia. The two first in Romania and France were delivered in person because we didn't have the COVID uh, pandemic then. And then the third in Latvia in 21. Um, regarding the last one, uh, regarding the, um, uh, the, the availability to invasive uh, alien species. In addition, uh, two sites uh, visits were implemented from uh, our partner in, in Italy and partner from uh, Spain, Extremadura. Uh, due to the fact that we had COVID, uh, our partners delivered successfully these uh, site visits, of course, with the support and the contribution from JES, who was uh, always uh, standing uh, next to us and advising us. Um, so both partners delivered uh, successfully these site visits uh, online, not on site. Uh, actually, what they did is that they reported uh, with uh, uh, professionals sites that they would like to share uh, their interest and their um, thematic with the rest of the partners. And this happened in 20 and in 21. Now, uh, moving on, uh, apart from the workshops and the site visits, uh, partners were asked to uh, identify and, uh, document and document good practices from their own uh, regions. Uh, four good practices were approved uh, during the course of the project, and three of them were published uh, after policy officer review on the policy learning platform. And this was a great achievement from all partners uh, working so hard and um, publishing their uh, good practices on the policy learning platform. Uh, on top of that, partners delivered and successfully uh, carried out uh, six um, steering group meetings. Every uh, six months, we met together uh, to discuss our day-to-day uh, -day business and the efforts that we have to do and the work plan we have to um, follow in order to uh, achieve the, uh, the targets that the program, that the project uh, had. So we met um, every six months. Um, and here you can see some photos from our meetings. And the last three were uh, implemented online, again, uh, due to uh, COVID pandemic. Uh, on top, uh, all partners uh, were very involved in, um, in uh, pr producing and, and contributing uh, several uh, dissemination efforts such as events uh, carried out from Portugal uh, uh, and for the implementation of the EU level for policy learning with international participation stakeholders from uh, in, um, several countries. Um, all partners uh, managed to deliver six uh, public dialogue events, 14 in info days in their countries, and 36 meetings with uh, uh, stakeholder groups national in their um, countries, discussing about the progress of the, of the project and seeking uh, contribution and, and, and advice from their involvement from other national stakeholders. As a result, and following the, the project, um, six action plans were delivered from six partners. Uh, NECA uh, delivered the action plan 2123, uh, focusing on focusing on education and raising awareness on EAS, producing and developing a web part, a portal, portal on uh, EAS, and um, uh, formulating the EAS management working group. For Italy, FLA delivered uh, the, um, the, the action plan um, um, focusing on the call for tender Turismo and Atravita 2. Extremadura from Spain um, developed their own action plan uh, focusing on introduction of new lines on action of action in political instrument, inclusion of a new thematic objective 
within the priority axis of the ERDF funds, inclusion of submeasures within the measures established in legal but, um, participatory local uh, development. For Adribi, uh, delivered the action plan uh, focusing on uh, the guide on protecting the biodiversity from EAS with specific emphasis on urban areas. Later on, uh, Adria will uh, further discuss about that and explain to us. Um, OEC from France delivered the action plan uh, focusing on knowledge improv improvement, drafting, and implementation of lists of species prohibited from introduction into Corsica, uh, limit the spread and arrival of new species and restore ecosystems. And from Zevia, from Latvia, uh, focusing on raising awareness of the environmental and socioeconomic risks and impact on EAS, support the implementation of EAS eradication and containment measures in natural areas. So this is in short, uh, how I can share with you uh, five and six, more than five years of hard work for the Invalis project. And thank you very much for your attention and thank you for uh, uh, the invitation here. And uh, now if... Uh, uh, Sorry, I'm if I mispronounce any names, I apologize. Uh, from the Joint Secretariat uh, representative, uh, responsible for the support of project applicants and project partners, as well for the assessment of applications and finance monitoring. If I'm saying it correct. Exactly. Okay. You have the flow. Thanks a lot. Uh, good morning uh, from my side. Uh, it's a real pleasure for me to, to be here. Uh, final conferences are important for the projects, but also for us at the Secretariat, because it's really the opportunity to hear concretely about your results and also uh, your uh, perspective on the project. So this is uh, a real pleasure for me to, to be here. Uh, as mentioned, I'm uh, the finance officer of the project. I've been monitoring in Banis for well, a couple of years now. And uh, I will uh, present uh, briefly. Uh, I don't know. If you can press this okay. in order to change them. So I have a presentation in, in three parts. I will first. Uh, briefly talk about the results of the program uh, for the programming period 2014-2020. Then I will zoom in a little bit and uh, talk about Invalis project briefly because in the end you are the one to talk more about it than me. Uh, and I will finish my presentation talking about the new and actually current programming period and the features of, uh, of this new program. So um, about the state of play, as you probably know, uh, during the 2014-2020 period, we had four calls for project proposals through which we approved 258 projects, uh, which is much more than what we initially planned. And uh, what is interesting to, to notice, as you can see on this slide, is that almost all EU regions are represented in this project. And among the uh, actually more than 2,000 partners in this project, 25% of them are managing authorities of structural funds because in the 2014 2020 period, there was a strong focus on uh, structural funds programs. Uh, and despite the challenges we all faced, uh, projects are performing uh, and running very well. Uh, you have the, the figures here. I won't repeat them all, but I think it's uh, interesting to, to note that uh, we uh, achieved and we even exceeded the target that were set in the cooperation program in terms of number of action plans validated and also in terms of staff with uh, professional increased capacity, capacity thanks to 
the participation in the in the projects and this is uh, thanks to you and uh, what is more important for us of course is why the projects are doing these activities and uh, the results they, they achieve thanks to our project we have uh, um, already 925 policy changes uh, again more than half of them are uh, related to structural funds and when it's possible, we ask our projects um, when they have a policy improvement, if they can estimate a financial impact. And uh, so far, we see that our projects have um, been able to demonstrate a financial impact on local, regional, national funds of more than uh, 1.2 1 billion euro. And uh, as you can see, uh, the, I think what is uh, quite striking and, and important to underline is that when Interreg Europe um, invests one euro, it leads to the mobilization of almost five euro in the regions. And I think uh, this is important because it shows also the importance and the leverage effect of interregional cooperation, which is in the end the reason why we are here also today. Um, now, as I, I was um, teasing in my introduction, zooming in a little bit on uh, Invalis project. Uh, well, as you know, uh, it belongs to the thematic objective uh, environment and resource efficiency. And as you can see, the um, allocation of projects per priority objectives in the previous programming period was quite balanced, actually almost perfectly balanced. And uh, so 67 projects were approved under this uh, thematic objective. If we zoom in even more, uh, 36 projects were or are still working on cooperation on natural and cultural heritage. And you can see uh, the map right now. And if we zoom in even more, we have four projects working on biodiversity preservation with different angles. And uh, well, Invalis is the only one uh, working on invasive uh, species. So uh, you, uh, you are a quite unique project uh, on, on this regard. I, I won't repeat what has been already mentioned in the previous presentation, but uh, today is also the occasion for me to thank you uh, for uh, your commitment to the project, for the great uh, job that you've been doing, uh, also for contributing to the knowledge gathered within the program, and this despite the challenges that you've made. <laughs> Uh, so uh, thanks a lot uh, for this. I'm very curious and I'm looking forward to hear more concretely about your results in the upcoming presentations. And uh, well, uh, you, uh, this was also mentioned, had a very active contribution uh, on the policy learning platform activities, but I will uh, maybe skip this and, and move to the end of my presentation about the new programming period, the current uh, programming period, actually. So um, uh, we, uh, well, the program didn't change that much, but I think one important element to underline is that we now have only one single overarching um, priority dedicated to capacity building. Um, and on this, Interreg Europe is still uh, the, the only pan-European program. We also keep our strategic focus on uh, improving policies. We also keep the way of doing this uh, uh, through capacity building and exchange of experience. And uh, in a simple way of putting it, we can say that Interreg Europe helps policymakers to, to find new solutions to the challenges they face in the region. And on this, member states have decided, as I was saying before, to only have one uh, priority on cap capacity building. And on a thematic uh, uh, perspective, uh, we have six topics. 
smarter Europe, greener Europe, more connected Europe, more social Europe, uh, Europe closer to citizens, and um, uh, better cooperation governance. But we have a concentra concentration principle on smarter, greener, and social, uh, meaning that 80% of the budget of the program uh, will be dedicated to these three topics I just mentioned. The way of doing it will not change. We still have cooperation projects, and this uh, you know almost uh, better than me how it works. And uh, then the policy learning platform. Maybe briefly on the policy learning platform, even though uh, I know you know because you were yourself involved in the PLP activities. Uh, what I can say is that the policy learning platform provides services to any interested region in Europe. You don't need to be part of a project to benefit from it. And it goes from light services like uh, articles, policy briefs, to a bit more demanding activities like peer reviews, workshop, and webinars. So if you're interested, I, I strongly recommend you to have a look at the website uh, where everything is described. We had our first call for proposal that closed at the end of May this year. We received uh, 134 pro project proposals. I won't say much more about it because in the end, I'm pretty sure that what is really interesting for you is uh, what is coming next, which is the second call. Uh, you might be the first one seeing this slide because we had our monitoring committee last week. Uh, and, and this information was approved last week. So our second call will be open from 15th of March to the 9th of June, 2023. And if you are interested, uh, please know that we will organize networking events online in November and beginning of December, also with a policy learning uh, event. So uh, in case you're looking for partnership, in case you're interested, uh, you can, uh, uh, participate in these uh, online events. And we will then have our call launch event in Stockholm on 15th of March uh, next year. So if you're interested, you will find a lot of resources on our website. Uh, some are, as you can see on this slide, are available only when the call is open, but many things are available all the time. So don't hesitate to have a look. Uh, it goes from um, uh, well, obviously the program manual, but also some uh, tips and uh, uh, some webinars, so don't hesitate to, to have a look. And uh, finally, you can join our online community in case you want to be updated uh, and our newsletter to receive information about what is coming next on the program side. And on this, uh, I thank you for your attention. If you have some questions, I'm uh, here also today, so don't stay to come to me. Thank you very much, Jamie. Uh, and, uh, and now we will uh, have the next presentations for the, the action plans from the uh, partners of uh, the project. Um, because we uh, lost some time uh, uh, due to the technical issues. Uh, we will have them, uh, the first two uh, action plans. We will have very, we will only take two questions per presentation if you have any questions, and then we can have the break for a coffee and then move on to the next uh, presentations forward. So now we can. Start with the action plan for, of uh, Extremadura from uh, Francisco Hueso. Am I saying this right? From uh, Spain. And, uh, yes. Hi, everyone. Hello. Would you like to share your presentation with us? Yeah, I, I will start with the presentation right now. Uh, just let me share. One second, please. Second, 
There we go. Sorry. Can you see? Uh, can you see? Can you see the the presentation? Yes, we we can see the presentation. Um, would you like also to present yourself? Because I only have uh, uh, Mr. Weso's uh, CV. Uh, okay. I see. I see behind you the screen of my presentation. Uh, okay. So great. So I'm going to start with the presentation. Um, will be uh, well. Some some of the questions have been reviewed uh, previously. Uh, all the, uh, some of the uh, of the objectives that we 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 got uh, with this project, which have been a really interesting chance for exchanging uh, experiences, knowledge. Uh, well, this is the purpose of this pro program, but have been really rich for I think for all of us in many sense. Uh, despite the fact that we have to cope with the <clears throat> so part of the program with the COVID. Uh, pandemia, we, we was a bit a pity because we wanted to to go abroad and see the other colleagues. So, uh, for us, uh, the uh, the project um, uh, it, it has been uh, different changes in uh, some aspects in uh, within the the region. Uh, one of the that we have developed uh, precisely. Is the the effect, the influence that we have we we, we had in, in another project, uh, in this case with a, a, a cross border pro, uh, project, cross border uh, program project, um, which with Portugal, where thanks to the experiences in in, in valleys, we they they, they assumed that for the project for the this cross border project they could implement more, more budget uh, in a specific task for um, um, invasive alien species. Uh, we also uh, have, we increased the control uh, actions, uh, a specific action for the eradication for our uh, most important uh, species, alien species, like the American mink, uh, the Florida tortoise, there's plenty of them in, in, in our rivers. Uh, so we it means the uh, like uh, support for this type of action with this alien species. In the 2021, uh, we achieved uh, the launch of a regional decree that was approval, um, which is mandatory for the region, uh, specifically uh, for the eradication uh, of these uh, uh, alien species uh, according our, our, our uh, protocols these uh, define for how to treat with this uh, alien species which is all uh, was uh, published um, on may uh, from of may last year um also uh for 2022 and, and forwards uh uh we were now managing the next generation funds for specific for Extremadura uh, and the regional government uh, approved uh, a budget of three million for for supporting uh, actuation for action for different species like uh, the one that you can see in the presentation is specific for the Vespa for the, the, the American Vision and these all species the well, they, they, they are getting really concerned in at, at uh, the policy uh, level, and also uh, we implement different dissemination actions. Uh, the uh, was already mentioned the action plan for Senadura, but they also well, we had the chance of uh, disseminating our activities in in Bali's in different. Um, um, Meetings and, and uh, exhibitions, okay, in, in different congress, mostly in, in different congress uh, around the uh, Spain and, and at the regional level. And this was in one in, in Madrid for uh, national at national level, where we could uh, inform about what are 
or where our actions or activities uh, according to the Valley's project. And also in February 21, uh, we approve uh, a plan, a disaction plan, and, and uh, they were implemented. Then, uh, what, what was the uh, target of this action plan? It was divided in two main actions. One, uh, in the introduction of new line uh, of political, uh, political instruments. Uh, now, currently, we are negotiating with the European Commission for the uh, NES uh, operation program. It's now already finished, so we are trying to get uh, influence on uh, this is specific uh, uh, this is specific task and actions in this uh, in our regional operation program, but uh, we want we were including a new thematic objectives, uh, uh, also uh, with the European Agricultural Fund and the, uh, for the rural development, and also um, in this specific uh, leader program for 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 in. in implementing and increasing the participation at a local, very local level, like small cities, small towns. Um, next one. So, uh, which is our current situation? According to Balis, now uh, uh, the CAP, uh, the Common Agricultural Program, it was approved last August. Uh, we uh, achieve uh, uh, the, the, the development of a specific plan for for for, for the CAP, in, in which is concerned to Spain, um, including two decree, to, uh, 18 decrees um, and laws uh, that have to be developed, and, uh, and it will be implemented uh, for the coming next year, for the, the beginning of the next year. So we have been in negotiation on um, trying to in, in, in influence in this uh, uh, new CAP program. And uh, so we, we got uh, around 47.8% of the, the spends of the funding uh, for, for um, a specific measure for environmental uh, nature. And according to this uh, EIA, EIA FRD funding uh, for uh, natural limitation with uh, 710 millions for a specific limitation since 60 millions and also another investment also as well 44 million. So, but specifically, uh, we we include the PDF link uh, in order to be consulted. Uh, in the specific objectives uh, in six, uh, we uh, maintain in the, the according to the cap, the new cap, uh, mentioned to the habitats uh, and investment to fight against this invasive species. So uh, at a national level, uh, there, is a, there is our main concern about this, the importance of keeping fighting about this invasive species. Um, also, because we have the national, the national law uh, is uh, uh, mandatory for all the regions, and also adaptation, uh, 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 some rules for adaptation of the landscape elements, and also for the wildlife, and um, and uh, precisely uh, um, construing um, drinking fountains and some other facilities for 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 this type of. Um, uh, to, to fight against this, this species. Also, there are concerns about the environmental pollution, including that the, the phytosanitary products, uh, according for the invasive failing species and the, and the climate change. And also, uh, we can, uh, the, 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 there are 45 paragraphs concerning this strategic plan for, for in the CAP for for this specific action. And we achieve um, um, an actions uh, concerning the conservation and improvement of biodiversity, especially in the case of uh, these protected habitats uh, and the species to maintain the local species 
um, for the conservation and restoration of these uh, agricultural habitats, uh, which are the common the, the common interest for, for the region and the creation and maintenance of these type of uh, elements uh, to focus on the creation of environmental uh, kind of heterogeneity. Um, these uh, ec ecological corridors also uh, that may push away these uh, uh, invasive species. Then um, Extremadura uh, could influence directly in the introduction of this uh, um, um, actuation of densification with uh, uh, native forest species. Uh, so we, they want to recover with uh, national and native forest species and vegetation treatments. So it's uh, a, a specific, this is the Spanish uh, CAP uh, document uh, where you can observe that specifically for Extremadura, uh, they introduced this uh, uh, in measure for uh, densification with the uh, native forest species. So, uh, which means that we are going to be, we are going to have funding and which is a demonstration that um, thank you to this kind of project we have influence in these um, uh, political instruments, uh, like uh, uh, is the CAP. Also, um, more specifically in the document, there are works for the eradication of invasive alien species. This is because it's a national level for specifically for Semadura, is 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 already mentioned. So we are very glad to to achieve that. Um, also, uh, um, concerning to the second action and the development of these, uh, or some, some other rising activities uh, uh, for the six monthly uh, um, meetings, we, uh, we had uh, different objectives, seven different objectives uh, concerning the action for public entities where um, as a region is, com is, is, is um, uh, combined two provinces, so we want to also in, involve these uh, councils, which is, uh, uh, let's say, the councils, the province, province councils, they give support to small towns. That's the, the role of these uh, province councils. So we want to coordinate with them different actions for uh, giving some protocols and uh, instrument for eradication at local level for this um, uh, alien species. Um, also, for um, between uh, the transfer of information from the government to Extremadura, uh, the, um, according to these provincial entities, also the cooperation with this uh, this is um, another main up uh, uh, institution, which is the the, the the supreme institution that combine the these uh, councils, uh, province councils. Uh, somehow to uh, organize how we're going to manage with them the the, the implementation of these uh, activities. Uh, and also the implication of the regional level uh, where came in force, uh, into force agreements, specific regional agreements uh, to uh, coordinate with, and this is a specific example for, for the emergency phone number, in case that some people, some citizens, they find some regular, uh, in some places they found this, uh, they don't know, they, they cannot rec reckon this uh, alien uh, invasive species, they can call and they have a protocol how to act and how to get this uh, uh, species. No, 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 Open. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Hey, could you close the microphone, please? Nice. Ore, para pole ore. Tia lo canete. Ah. Yeah, the phone. Ah, sorry. Could you close the microphone? Ah, calla, nice. Ah, close the microphone. Could you close the microphone? Oh, no. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to try with the chat. I'm going to give me a moment. I'm going to try. Yes.
Now? Two. Now. Yes. You can go ahead. Sorry. Uh, Sorry. Uh, okay. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, you, you, okay. So uh, with uh, this, uh, the five objective uh, was the creation of a committee of experts uh, within the regional, at the regional level. Uh, to work between uh, national ministry and ecological on our, on our uh, regional ministry, uh, national ministry for ecological trans uh, transition, uh, to work in in research with uh, our university in Extremadura in in the research, research department, how to uh, also uh, uh, go ahead with uh, new new techniques. Also for the objective six, we establish coordination between entities. Uh, um, we, we develop an agreement with the uh, Extremadura fire, de fire department uh, how to work with a specific uh, species. For for example, with the Vespa Velutina, uh, you can see in the in the picture how they uh, they have the the um, protocol how to act in case that the, they they have some uh, notice or they they have some uh, information about the the system of this. Um, which is really, really concerned now in, in the region because it's killing the the local the color, local uh, uh, best part, um, with the really uh, economical impact on the pro, on on the on the farmers. Um, finally, with the objective seven, we promote public research uh, concerning the the IES uh, coordinating with. Uh, in this case, with the what we call the hydrographic uh, confederation of of the Guadiana River, which is the one, uh, well, we've got two big rivers. Uh, well, we have uh, we present in our even previously in, in the other meetings on the impact of this Nanfia uh, uh, Mexicana, which is covering uh, practically all the surface of the river passing by our main city and. And we have to work also with this institution, which is a, a national level, uh, and that they are in charge of managing on all the works regarding the managing of the of the Guadiana River across different provinces in, in Spain. But uh, we also work with them. Um, and we continue developing uh, these objectives, um, and we are perceiving good results. And that's it. Uh, if you have any question. Uh, you can please tell us. We are really glad to also, as I, as I mentioned, to 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 uh, achieve this uh, uh, concerning specific cons concerning uh, in the cap in the cap program, and also uh, all the all the uh, improvement that we we got with the and um, also the consolidation. I, I would say the consolidation of these two action these actions. In at, uh, at regional at regional level. Thank you very much, the colleagues for, from uh, Extremadura. Would do, are there any questions in in the in the room? No, from the chat. Anyone uh, uh, listening to us from Zoom, you can put a question in the chat if you want. I mean, yeah. the, 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 there is a really economical impact on, as uh, the, your general secretary mentioned in, in its presentation, uh, in her presentation, uh, his presentation, sorry. Um, there is a really economical impact with this uh, alien species. So we must keep uh, fighting on, on this, this um, type of project, uh, uh, support the, these initiatives. Thank you very much. And we will move on to the next presentation, the action plan from Greece. From uh, Anna Tsuka and Orpheus Russos from NECA. Hello, uh, I'm Matthias Russos. Uh, 
Uh, I, I used to be the Valley's project manager until uh, November of last year. I'm going to speak to you about the action plan of Greece together with Anna Tsuga, who is, who is currently uh, in Valley's project manager. So uh, how did we come to the how did we develop the Invalid's action plan grids? Uh, from the one side, uh, we evaluated the situation of uh, invasive fellow species management in Greece. Uh, we, this included the state of play at the beginning of the project, uh, the developments since 2018 and uh, until 2021, last year, in areas such as uh, the legislative framework, uh, research, uh, also the, the stakeholder meetings we have done as part of the advanced project. And uh, based on this, uh, we identified uh, the main gaps in uh, IAS management in Greece. Uh, on the other side, we also uh, uh, we also carried out the, the, the interregional exchange of experience with our other partners, uh, including the baseline studies, the interregional workshops, the site visits, the EU wide uh, policy learning event. We have also seen this in the previous presentations. And uh, combining uh, with the combination of these two, we came up to the, we came to the uh, Invalis Action Plan for Greece. Uh, so, what was the situation of basic uh, value space management in Greece in 2021? Uh, the joint ministerial decision for implementing the European regulation for invasive value species was about to be adopted. It was adopted uh, at the end of the year, in December. Um, a project on uh, drafting a national list of uh, IAS of member state concerning Greece and organizing a methodology of, uh, for the risk assessment uh, had started. And it's, in the meantime, it, it is completed. Uh, this is a very important project because it covers uh, most areas of uh, IAS management. Uh, and uh, there were also several other ongoing or completed projects and research programs, uh, which focused on uh, specific uh, specific species or specific uh, categories of species, uh, networks uh, like uh, El Nais for uh, marine alien species, and uh, citizen science initiatives like Alientoma or uh, is it uh, alien to you share it from uh, IC. And uh, we identified uh, as the main gaps uh, that there is a limited awareness and understanding of the threats posed by invasive alien species, and that not only by the general public, but also in the, the competent authorities. Uh, there has been some progress in networking among stakeholders involved in, uh, in uh, IAS management, but uh, this needs to be maintained and improved. Uh, and there is uh, quite a large amount of uh, data and knowledge, but it's not always uh, available to policymakers. 
Uh, so we came to the Invalis Action Plan. It was adopted in August uh, 2021. Uh, it consists of uh, three actions. Uh, the first one, education and raising awareness on uh, invasive any species. Uh, the second one, uh, a web portal on uh, invasive any species. And uh, the third one, uh, establishing a working group for uh, IAS management. And this uh, will act uh, as support to the legal framework and uh, research on uh, investment species. Uh, and we also published uh, uh, an article in a scientific journal on the Invalis Action Plan in the Journal of Marine Science and Engineering, uh, where we describe the process of with which we came to the action plan and the the, the actions from which it uh, consists. And uh, Anna will tell you now more. So the action plan is uh, all about three actions: action one, two, and three. Uh, regarding action one, which is about raising awareness and education on invasive alien species. Uh, we have come a long way until this moment. Um, there was almost no education and no knowledge on invasive alien species until now, until the project initiated. Uh, the objective is to raise awareness of the public and competent authorities on the threats that have to do with uh, invasive alien species. Uh, which are threats regarding the economy, the quality of life, the um, uh, biodiversity protection, environment in general, uh, the economy. Uh, how can this be achieved? Through education and aware awareness raising seminars in schools, environmental education events, exhibitions at country en entry points like ports and airports, uh, TV and radio spots about IAS. Um, uh, action two is about the creation of a web portal that has to do with the IAS. What does this mean? What, would, what will the web portal contain? It will contain general information about the invasive alien species, uh, possible sightings of these species, uh, links that are related to IIS projects and sites in Greece, like the alien Tama, that is about uh, alien invasive species on insects. Uh, we will have news related to IIS management in Greece, which means uh, pub, uh, scientific publications, new developments that might have occurred uh, on the institutional framework and site scenes educational material and the uh, ideal thing to be included in this portal. We think that is the creation of a room of a space that is will give floor to scientists, to interested parties, to communicate, exchange knowledge and ideas about the invasive alien species and bring together stakeholders and the interested parties in general. Action three is about the IAS management working group. Uh, this is based, this action is based actually on the Invalis stakeholders group, which uh, now exists during the Invalis project. Uh, we are currently planning to enlarge this group, this working group, by adding more associations, uh, regional authorities, professional chambers. Uh, and many more. Uh, we think that the involvement of all stakeholders in, is very important, mostly in management planning. Uh, we can this way reduce any possible facility existing towards management measures. Um, we think it's important the discussion of IAS project outcomes and policy measures, and this will be a nice opportunity 
to identify any requirements for new projects and measures that are required for the confrontation of this problem. Now you can see two diagrams. Uh, we asked our stakeholders during the project about the frequency and the way that they like to um, make these stakeholder meetings happen. So on the diagram on the left, you can see it's all about the frequency. The majority of the stakeholders answered that they think the best time to uh, make these meetings happen is every six uh, months. Um, and the way they prefer it, uh, most of them answered altern uh, alternately, which means both ways, either physical or virtually, but you see the, the second most preferred option is actually the, the virtual attendance because this way more people from uh, distant places can also participate. So the subjects to be discussed in these meetings that we have is uh, we are trying to find ways of communicating, of raising awareness, as we said, about the invasive alien species problem to a wider public, I talk about bioethics, uh, disseminate the, and transfer the knowledge to end users, to see the view of the citizens and organizations opposed to IAS management measures. And we can talk also about how can the the measures, the, the policies, uh, national policy, policies um, be harmonized with the European policies. Uh, for example, in common fish, fisheries policy or the common agricultural policy. Now, here you can see two screenshots actually from um, two different meetings we have during the project. Uh, the first meeting of the phase two took place in 24th of November, 2021. And the topic of discussion was the how we can raise awareness and networking on inv invasive alien species. Uh, we are planning to have another meeting by the end of this year, probably on November or December. This is not yet decided, but we will let you know soon. Uh, where we will discuss about the, the national invasive alien species list, which was done by the Ministry of Environment and uh, Energy, along with many researchers, um, Mr. Nico Kavuras, Ms. Arya Nutsu, and their team. Um, a very great work for Greece. This was it from our part. Thank you very much. And before we proceed, may I just say very short few words? Thank you. I really want to thank my colleagues, Ms. Dimitra Pedza and Mr. Orfeus Russos. I'm very anxious. I'm sorry I'm shaking. <laughs> um, for helping me during this project, for making this happen. Mr. Nicolas Kurzis for the tech support because he's been fighting with beasts <laughs> this last month to make this all happen. Thank you for being here uh, physically and virtually with us, for supporting this project, for contributing, for committing to this project. Thank you, even the ones who sent me an email and said we can't participate, but wish me luck. Uh, thank each and every one of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank okay, you. It's uh, great. Thank you. It, it's a very moving moment for the <laughs> So uh, I think we can break now for a coffee for 10 minutes, only 10 minutes, because we need to end the time. And are you the colleagues from uh, Corsica and Lombardia, are, are you okay with uh, continuing 10 minutes, your presentations? What is it? From Lombardy, from Lombardia, 
Hi, Nita Lap is speaking. Hi, hi, everybody. Uh, well, uh, we are waiting for our speaker for Massimo, and uh, we will arrive uh, in, uh, in the next minutes. So for us, it's perfect to have the copy deck now. Perfect. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. And from Corsica? Yes, uh, we are waiting for our speaker too. So if All we right. can have a break, uh, it's perfect. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, so we'll, we'll be back in 15 minutes. Thank you.
Right. Uh, welcome back, everyone. I hope you had a, a nice break. And we will now move on with the next two action plans, the next four action, action plans. Uh, and first, we will go with the action plan uh, from, from uh, Corsica. Uh, it's uh, Ms. Palgovini who will be presenting. Um, yes. Hello, can you hear us? Yes, uh, can you hear me? It's okay? Yes. Yes, very well, thank you. Okay. You can start. Uh, you can see my presentation, it's okay for you? Great. Yes, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I'm Gwenael Baldovini, head of the Terrestrial Biodiversity Department at the Corsican Environment Office. I'm going to present you the state of progress of the implementation of the action plan for the fight against invasive alien species for the Corsican region. Uh, our plan, uh, our action plan, sorry, is based on the FEDER FSE Corsica 2127 program of operations. It's divided into three major actions, which are themselves broken uh, down into objectives. The action one, knowledge improvement, with uh, three objectives. The action to drafting and the implementation of list of species prohibited from introduction into Corsica with four objectives and the action three limit the spread and arrival on new species on restore ecosystem with uh, two objectives. You have the titles, the title of the objective is uh, on this slide. With uh, regard to action one, we have already implemented various projects in order to meet the three objectives. For the objective one, we have used the IEM tool to list all the animal and plant EAS present in Corsica. The final list should be completed by the end of the year. In order to meet objective two, we are participating financially and technically in various studies to improve knowledge in conjunction with a network of scientific partners, such as universities or specialized research consultancies. Uh, for the objective three, uh, which aim to centralize knowledge, to do this, we have uh, set up a web platform accessible, accessible to all, which lists uh, all the fauna species present in Corsica. Um, some fauna has a, a cheat uh, to the ecologies of each of them, and a specific mention to introduce species. It's possible through this platform to report any new observation on the field. Uh, for the action uh, two, uh, drafting and implementation of list of species prohibited from in uh, introduction into Corsica, uh, we are using uh, the results of action one. And uh, we, um, for this to happen, it was first necessary to acquire the competence to act. Uh, this is, was done on the 20 November uh, 21 with a deliberation by the Corsican Assembly approving. 
the implementation at regional level of list of animal and plant species prohibited from Corsica, introduction into Corsica. Um, the objective too consisted to bringing together all the stakeholders. To do this, we have uh, scheduled uh, several preparatories meeting throughout 21. We can announce that the working groups will be officially set up on October 17 during the meeting of the Territorial Biodiversity Committee. These groups will meeting during the first quarter of uh, 23 in order to come up with a proposal for a list that can be uh, validated at the end of the first half 23. To conclude, uh, action three concerns the implementation of uh, actions on the ground to limit the spread and several of new species and restore ecosystems. This requires a developing watch network and different scales. The work is in progress, and we have begun on the June 13 the Interreg Aliem 2 project to meet this objective. Moreover, we develop and promote good practice to restoration of ecosystems and the use of local species such as promoting the use of local plants to maintain the ecological balance, particularly in favor of uh, pollinizators, action on the ban to the introduction uh, of exogenous bee and uh, second and uh, big beekeeping equipment and call uh, for signs and alerts via uh, social networks. And finally, we make the promotion of a regional label called Corsica Grana. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Um, are there any questions for our colleagues in Corsica from uh, either on the chat or in the room? You had a question? No? Okay. You explained it very, very nicely and very concisely. So we would move now to the um, action plan of uh, Lombardia. And the, it's uh, the Massimo Di Domenico who's going to present. It's me. Hello. Good morning. Hello. <laughs> good morning, Greece. Hello from Italy, <laughs> from Milan. Uh, so let, let me present uh, our action plan. Our action plan regarding Valis uh, has been a very, a very simple one. Uh, also because Lombardy regions is, uh, is uh, strongly, uh, um, strongly um, focused on financing big projects regarding the contrast of uh, invasive island species and uh, safeguard and protections of local biodiversity. This kind of project, uh, FLA, uh, is the organization to who I belong to, is uh, very interested in, in, in this subject. But uh, we have to fit uh, the object of Invalis within the policy instrument of Lombardy regions. Honestly, this was not a very simple uh, task, but we managed to, to organize in which way we could improve the regional policy instrument in order to include projects related to the contrast of uh, IES and protections of local biodiversity. And uh, uh, in, in our discussion, and uh, Mita is, is, is also connected to, uh, here, we had to, to talk with the managing authority of the Lombardy regions, asking in which way uh, the regional uh, operational programming 
could include measures that regards uh, the aim of the Invalis project. So in, in a, certain, a certain way, uh, is always like this, in the sense you have some objective, some important objective, but then you have to face, you have to fit this objective with the financial uh, resources that, for example, a, 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 a local authority has at disposal, and uh, uh, to see in which way there is a political support of, of, of certain objectives. For, uh, can I interrupt you for a minute? Could you share your uh, uh, presentation because we can see we don't see the full screen. Okay, sorry. Thank you. So to see it better. Could you see now? Could you see it now? No, it's still in the notes. Because it says uh, I'm sharing the screen. I, I try to, to get out and uh, I will try to, to share the screen. Let me see if it works. To start the presentation. Uh, not, not okay. Only to... No, it's still uh, on the notes. Could you... F5, they, they say here, we have the best audience here. They say you have to press F5. Great. Ah, perfect. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. So I got another another way to to share this the screen because it says uh, I, you are sharing the screen, but I'm sorry, uh, you, you didn't see anything. So anyway, as I, as I was saying, it was not easy applications of this uh, action plan. But at the end, we managed with the managing authority of the Lombardy regions to include. Uh, IS and uh, uh, safeguard and protections of local bio biodiversity within the uh, policy instrument of the Lombardy regions. In particular, in which way we try to, to include such, such ob ob objectives of the Invalis project. We try to, uh, to improve what we say are the ecological connections between touristic area and in which way investment in the touristic area could improve and safeguard and protect local biodiversity. Because we start from the, from the idea that uh, ecotourism can help generate uh, funding and this funding are important and needed to cover also important management costs in, uh, in protected areas. And also, from our point of view, this uh, has been seen as a, a way to promote the importance and to support biodiversity conservation and economic development. So mixing the two things, so protecting local biodiversity and giving money to touristic attractions uh, in order to invest also in this particular objective, we uh, managed to, to fit our action plan within the regional programming. And so what we did, we support the Lombardy regions in, uh, in the definitions of, uh, of a call that is called uh, tourism and attractiveness. And also we, we managed to introduce financing, financing measure to uh, that provide support for the uh, realizations and renovations of structures and facilities, facilities uh, to, to complement uh, units related to touristic activities. <clears throat> and uh, how the, the tender were, 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 what's the main framework of, the, of this tender? We were able to, um, to, to, to put, to insert in the call specific points that should be given to a social and environmental sust sustainability project. And in particular, such projects that include, for example, the use of certified local plants that could improve the ecological connections between natural area where the touristic uh, premises uh, are located and uh, the local fauna. 
And um, uh, regarding the call, uh, in particular, um, uh, FLA uh, suggested to use local plant species in the renovations of the uh, such touristic outdoor structures. And also in this way, we managed to, 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 um, to trigger investment that include also this important goal. And uh, um, in, in particular, what we have done, let me see if I can switch to the next slide. Here you have uh, uh, the general uh, framework of the, of the call where we fit the action one, um, our action, action plan, action one. And so uh, in this particular uh, framework, you can see the, the, the relationship and the players involved between us, between FLA and the regional government. In particular, we managed to insert uh, the objective of Invalis uh, uh, by talking and uh, relating to the managing authority at the Lombardy regions, and also, of course, uh, with, with a dialogue with the environmental authority uh, uh, still at the, the Lombardy regions. So in the year 2020, but of course now we are in the monitoring part of the project, as you well know, but uh, we, mo we, our monitoring started with seeing when, on the, uh, uh, when there was the, the publications of, of the code that I'm talking about, on the on the original official gazette that was uh, that happened in July 2020 so in 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 the midst of the covid-19 uh, uh, period unfortunately and also uh, we start the monitoring and to see in which way this uh, this uh, call could finance uh, particularly uh, investments uh, in a touristic premises, but with regard to uh, IES and protecting uh, and safeguarding uh, bio biodiversity. Regarding uh, touristic, this call we are talking about uh, now here, it is written uh, 17 uh, million euro, but uh, then uh, the, the, the amount of total of financing arrive at more than 20 million, million euros. And here you also have uh, in which way we started the monitoring. First of all, we, we, we as I said, we, 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 uh, we assisted to the validations and the publications on the original Lombardy official gazette of the call. And also uh, we, we see the, uh, in which way uh, the, the call was presented publicly. And also we monitored uh, afterward, the asset project, uh, and uh, also in particular, we dedicated our attention to such projects that favor local biodiversity using specific, spe specified certified plants, species, uh, as I said, for environmental restorations in, uh, touristic, uh, in touristic facilities. Um, of course, we, we the monitoring proceeds uh, with the uh, number of candidate projects, which included environmental sustainability objective as part of their goals, and also uh, such projects were appointed with uh, uh, evaluation points from one to five. Uh, when they, they were subjected to evaluations and uh, uh, these points were given to the project that uh, focus on the use of native plant species uh, for requalifications of, uh, uh, as I said, environments surrounding uh, the touristic facilities. Um, so the measure, in, if I have to explain very quickly and briefly, uh, the aim of the of the uh, of this of uh, the call and uh, in which way Invalis uh, could influence the policymaker with with its uh, policy instrument is to raise awareness regarding 
the objective of Invalis. And in a certain way, we uh, think that we have attained the goal because uh, uh, overall to the call, of course, is talking about touristic and attractions and uh, touristic premises, but uh, also included, as I said, uh, invasive and uh, protective biodiversity. So in a sense, we had uh, about uh, more than 300 applications in general and about uh, 184 uh, were approved and financed for 22 million euro. But this, uh, uh, regarding these applications, about 11% uh, of the applications uh, uh, focus on also on uh, uh, biodiversity and safeguarding, safeguarding um, biodiversity for a total financing of about 3 million euro. But this, uh, of course, this, this amount of money is not only dedicated to the objective of Invalis because uh, it's part of other measure that touristic premises uh, have applied to. So for example, so also including other dimensions such as uh, let's say water saving, energy efficiency, implementations of green infrastructures, and, and so on. Uh, so in conclusion, uh, I have to say that uh, we, 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 we manage to, to talk and to open a dialogue with the regional authority. And uh, regarding the objective of Invalis, we were able to, let's say, uh, as I said before, to raise awareness of the importance of the objective of Invalis project. And uh, also uh, the fact that, uh, uh, it's, it's particularly in a sector such as uh, the touristic one, that is very important for our region. And that's why the regional authority were very focused on this sector. And we have to fit inside uh, the objective of Invalis. But at the same time, we think we raise uh, awareness and uh, we we uh, were able to, uh, to, to dedicate part of uh, financing resources to this specific and uh, uh, important aspect, uh, uh, such as uh, the, 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 uh, that is the objective of the, uh, of the Invalis, uh, Invalis project. And this is all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um... No, I don't see any raised hands for questions and for uh, lack of time, we will pass to the next um, presentation, the action plan of Bucharest, Ms. Andrea Brinjoy. Yes. Did, did I pronounce yes. it correctly? So, could you... Uh, Hello, everyone. Can you introduce yes, yourself? Yes, I am to myself. Uh, my name is Andrea Brunzoi. I represent Bucharest e Regional Development Agency um, from Romania. Uh, I'm an expert uh, within the technical assistance uh, department, department, and um, I'm a communication manager within the Invalis project. I'm here with uh, my colleague uh, Stelian and two of our uh, stakeholders, Christina and uh, Ioana. Thank you for uh, coming with us today. Um, they are from uh, Universita uh, București. Um, they are partner in um, invasive alien species uh, project management, uh, uh, management of invasive alien species uh, project, uh, in which uh, the Minister of Environment is the beneficiary of, of uh, this project. So regarding um, yeah. regarding uh, my presentation, I would like to point out uh, the strategic development pathway before uh, describing our action plan because we consider it uh, very important in elaboration of the of the action plan. 
So since the, the date of uh, signing the financing contract of the Invalis project, uh, the Romanian legislation uh, has been modified. And since 2020, um, it updated some measures to, to ensure that the efficiency of the decision-making process of external uh, non-reimbursable external funds for regional development, development in Romania will, uh, will uh, be implemented um, in a right uh, pathway. And according to, the, uh, to this list legislation, um, ADRBA, UKSD of Regional Development Agency, uh, is in the process of being recognized um, from an intermediate, intermediate body into a managing authority for a regional operational program in UKSD for 2021-2027. The, the policy instrument that uh, uh, we aimed to influence as a result of uh, the Invalis uh, project implementation was uh, at the beginning the regional operational program for 2014-2020. But given the, the fact that uh, this program was uh, already under implementation, uh, before the, the Invalis project uh, uh, was started, uh, we couldn't influence uh, this, this policy instrument. So um, we focused uh, to reach the new policy instrument, 2021-2027, by including specific actions that refers to improving the protection of nature and biodiversity, green infrastructure, infrastructure especially in urban areas. This new, uh, this new program for Bucharest Hill Fox 2021-2027 is uh, under elaboration by um, our planning department and uh, it's uh, negotiated with the European Commission. Uh, by now, several working drafts have, have been already sent to the, the Commission. Um, and uh, the completion of this process uh, is being estimated uh, anytime. But uh, for sure, by the end of this year, uh, we'll be, we will have the, the final form of, of the program. However, given the fact that uh, there is a high degree of uncertainty, and therefore we consider that uh, concrete action to influence the, the, new, the new program is uh, mandatory, um, we we came with the with this action plan, the development of the guides on protecting the biodiversity from invasive alien species. Uh, and we find this guide um, as a predecessor document of the specific program guidelines, correctly guiding and uh, familiarizing future beneficiary of the of the new uh, program with the legislative provision on environmental protection within the priority of friendly environment, environmental region. This is the cover of, uh, of the guide uh, on protecting the biodiversity from EIS with, um, as I said before, with specific emphasis on urban areas. It contains um, several information regarding uh, invasive alien species and biodiversity, lesson learned uh, within uh, the Invalis project, measures that need uh, to be implemented in reconversion of unused, degraded, and uh, abandoned lands, and their uh, transformation into green spaces and infrastructures, such as parks, uh, and public gardens, and so on, as well as the modernization, modernization and the extension of existing green spaces, aim at increasing uh, and improving the li living condition of the, of the citizen in the region, with an emphasis on protection of biodiversity from uh, invasive alien species. Other um, content of the, of the guide uh, is referring the is regarding the EIS systems and registries that uh, we we found out throughout the Invalis project. Uh, more specific uh, within uh, the interregional learning process and uh, has. Uh, elements of trans transferability in our region. 
And nevertheless, the, the guide uh, uh, has general guidelines regarding access to financing with, uh, within the regional operational program and other European financing opportunities. Regarding the timing of, the, of, the, of our action plan, uh, we are uh, in the process of disseminating uh, the guide. Uh, we haven't uh, disseminated yet because uh, within uh, uh, throughout within the, our stakeholders, because uh, as I said before, we are still uh, um, waiting the, the final form of the next regional operational program. We want to um, that this guide should be part of the, the new the new program. Anyway, this activity of disseminating the guides is uh, still in graphics because the activity uh, is supposed to take place uh, this year between May 2022 and uh, the end of, uh, of, of year. So uh, we are uh, hoping uh, in the next few days, weeks at least, uh, we will um, have the final form of, of the program and uh, we will disseminate uh, the guide. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And finally, the, the action plan of Latvia from Mrs. Uh, Evia Ersche. 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 Okay. Yeah. Present um, yourself. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I am Evie Erksche, representing Zemgala Planning Region, uh, which is a regional institution in Latvia. And uh, I'm happy, very happy to be here. And uh, to this event, uh, I, have, I have come together with my colleague and uh, two stakeholders from uh, Ministry of Environment and Regional Protection and the uh, Nature Conservation Agency. And uh, in my presentation, I will uh, present my uh, this uh, action plan of Latvia. And uh, very similarly, as for the Romanian case, uh, uh, this um, project application uh, was uh, envisaged to prepare the actions for the existing uh, operational program, growth and environment. Uh, but this uh, operational program expired during the project implementation. So it was agreed that uh, in Latvia's case, we uh, prepare the actions for the next period operational program, uh, which is 2021-2027. Uh, and uh, consequently, therefore, the impacted policy documents uh, uh, for Latvia's case are operational program, environmental policy guidelines, and also a regional planning document, uh, Zemgala Planning Region Development Program. Uh, here you can see the content link between national and regional policy planning documents in Latvia in the field of uh, invasive species governance. And uh, the action plan of INVELS project uh, was developed in the parallel with the development of uh, new national and regional level planning documents for this new time period by various state and regional institutions. And uh, on the left uh, upper corner, you can see the National Development Plan, uh, which together with the uh, relevant uh, sectorial policy documents form the basis for a uh, new operational program. And uh, in the middle, you can see this uh, priority action program for uh, Natura 2000 sites for new time period. And uh, this action program form a basis for the specific support objectives program under operational program, which also cover measures uh, related to invasive species management. And as well, uh, on the right side, there is uh, this regional program, which was also impacted during the project. Um, as you saw before in the presentations, uh, 
during INVALS project were gathered together uh, the good practices from the partner countries and um, uh, ZPR has identified the most uh, appropriate practices for the Latvian challenges in this field. And uh, those practices demonstrate the, firstly how to raise public awareness on uh, invasive species recognition and identification using various platforms uh, and mobile applications. Secondly, uh, how to organize national uh, monitoring and uh, information events, risk assessments. And uh, finally, uh, how to involve the public in combating invasive species by organizing campaigns and voluntary actions in the natural areas. Uh, and uh, uh, project surveys and stakeholder uh, meetings showed uh, the, uh, this uh, problem, which is lack of uh, information and uh, knowledge in Latvia regarding invasive species management and recognition. And uh, our action in the action plan, uh, action one includes the raising awareness of environmental and social economic risks and impacts of invasive species. And the uh, activities under this action uh, involve informative materials and events, uh, trainings for different training groups, activities for pupils, and uh, public cleanup uh, activities. Uh, the second uh, action involves the support for the implementation of invasive species eradication and containment measures in the natural areas. Uh, under this uh, action, there are two activities. Uh, the first, uh, restoration of invaded habitats and ecosystems. And the second one, equipment for the combative, uh, combating invasive species. And the second one activity involves uh, small grant schemes and programs uh, uh, for, uh, for local or organizations and municipalities to purchase the necessary equipment uh, to fight the invasive species. And uh, regarding the small grant programs, there is an activity uh, included in the LIFE uh, IP Latvia Nature project uh, implemented in the spring of uh, this year by Latvian Rural Consultation and Education Center in cooperation with Nature Conservation Agency and Daugavpils University. Uh, they have invited uh, uh, landowners and municipalities to apply for small grants in order to find out uh, the methods that have not been tested in Latvia yet, but possibly effective for combating invasive species. And um, there were foreseen two, two, uh, two times for applications. And in this, uh, in this first uh, grant competition were available 20,000 euros uh, with between 1,000 1, and 5,000 per project. And uh, in the uh, first competition for uh, small grants, uh, five projects were approved. Uh, four of them uh, were aimed at the control of Spanish slag and uh, one project at the control of Canadian Golden Road. Uh, regarding the main challenges, I can uh, mention this awareness. Uh, which is not uh, not only in the in our society uh, matter, but also in the public sector, where is this willingness or not to include these activities in the planning documents, which is also related to the uh, possibilities to gain the financing for the fighting uh, invasive species, uh, because it is it is needed to do in the bigger area it's uh, it's um, it's more effective so uh, it is up to the also up to municipalities if they uh, find the financing for uh, fighting invasive species in their territories thank you for your attention thank you
Thank you very much. And uh, we've finished with the action plans from the different partners. And we will move on to, uh, we saw whatever happened in, in the projects, but now we can look into the future, what the, the project can take us in the short and the long term from here on. And um, to speak about that, we have with us uh, Mr. Harilos Nikokavuras from the Ministry of Environment and Energy in the, you know, in the Department of Biodiversity. Um, Hello, um, can you uh, hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, okay. we can hear you. Fine. Uh, <coughs> thank you very much. <coughs> so, um, let me share the presentation. F5, we, we established that. F5 is the key. Yeah, yeah. For us. All right, uh, can you see it full screen? Yes, perfect, thank you very much. All right, thank you. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to talk uh, briefly about uh, developments in the implementation <clears throat> of I IAS management in Greece. Um, so um, about our policy, um, we have uh, three main sectors uh, that uh, uh, we uh, concentrate on. And uh, of course, the most important one where, where we're talking about invasive alien species is the last one uh, down bottom, uh, the management part. Um, so when we're talking about invasive alien species, what uh, matters is um, how we do with their management. But in order to get there, uh, there are two other important sectors that um, we need to develop. One is the legal framework as a tool that will help us get to the management part. <clears throat> and the other is, uh, of course, the scientific knowledge that is needed in order to manage the species. Uh, and of course, I have included uh, another sector, which is the awareness actions, um, which is very important and it feeds into all other sectors. So, for example, <clears throat> I will uh, talk to you about uh, briefly about uh, the legal framework that we have developed and awareness actions uh, uh, related to that, take the form of uh, public consultation, for example, that is needed for uh, uh, before um, uh, a legal text is finalized. Uh, in, uh, when it comes to scientific knowledge, uh, the awareness actions uh, have to do with, uh, for example, uh, citizen scientist projects that could fit into the scientific knowledge, but the other way around, uh, also uh, are needed awareness actions to um, communicate the results of uh, scientific research to the public so that the public is aware of uh, what we're dealing with. And uh, when it comes to management, uh, again, of course, awareness actions are very important so that uh, the public is on board with what we're doing. Uh, the public understands uh, what are the risks and uh, what is the need for management. Uh, but also, when we're talking about awareness actions, we're not talking only about the public, but also about uh, administration. And uh, there, when it comes to management, uh, awareness actions are very important uh, in order to educate um, staff of uh, competent authorities in order to uh, be able to follow up with the management plans. So I will just talk very briefly about uh, each of these uh, parts. And... Um, I'll start with a legal framework. Uh, very briefly, we had uh, from 2011, uh, the, our law on the conservation of biodiversity and other provisions, Article 12, talking about the requirement of a list of invasive species and uh, the drafting of management plans. And um, what we did uh, recently is uh, last uh, December, um, we published a joint ministerial decision uh, with the aim of uh, giving us uh, the tools uh, necessary to implement the measures of regulation uh, 1143 of 2014 uh, on the prevention and management uh, of the introduction and spread of invasive alien species. Um, so what this joint ministerial decision includes is um, a definition of the competent authorities, uh, the mechanisms for the permits and authorizations, inspections, controls, etc., and um, the uh, public participation uh, part. And also very importantly for us, because it ties in with the other sector that I mentioned, is uh, the setting up of a scientific committee 
that uh, would help uh, inform the policies and the legal framework uh, in uh, relation to the um, uh, scientific knowledge that is required. So about that, um, so um, uh, as um, I heard uh, Mr. Varelidis at uh, the beginning of the uh, um, of the presentations that he mentioned that uh, we're lagging a bit behind uh, when it comes to the implementation of uh, uh, IAS regulation in uh, in Greece, which is very true. Uh, on the other hand, we're very lucky that uh, we have um, in the country an extensive uh, network, let's say, number of uh, scientists and uh, researchers that uh, in the previous decades have been uh, uh, continuously providing uh, scientific data on the uh, important species in Greece. Um, and I, I also earlier in the participants of the chat, uh, uh, Dr. Legakis and Dr. Krigas, and I don't know who else is in the presentation room right now, but uh, it's very important for us that uh, there is the scientific work that has been uh, happening over the uh, recent uh, years. And what we needed uh, as uh, administration was to uh, get all this knowledge that was out there and compile it and uh, again, combine it in a, in a way that is useful to us as an administration. So uh, what we did is uh, we started a project, a scientific project, that compilation of a list of invasive alien species and organization of methodology <laughs> for the risk assessment. And uh, this was an 18 month project that was undertaken by the University of Athens uh, in collaboration with the Hellenic uh, Center for Marine Research um, under the supervision of uh, Dr. Arianuchu uh, from the University of Athens. It was a, an 18 month project that was aiming to get all this information and compile it together in a, in a way that would be useful for us to implement uh, policies and management for the, these species. So we had um, a geographical uh, representation of uh, the species that are present in Greece and uh, also a sort of um, um, pri prioritization of the species that are more important to be managed uh, as soon as possible. Uh, and uh, it also included uh, the draft, the first draft of a national uh, list of invasive, invasive alien species. Um, <clears throat> so we'll have the deliverables of the project since last month, basically. And uh, now we need to make sure that uh, we make the most of it. So uh, let's talk about management. We are the part now where we, we, we have in place a, a important part uh, related to the legal framework that I mentioned, we'll have a starting point uh, when it comes to the scientific work that has been done and uh, collated. And uh, we need to move to the uh, main uh, point of uh, managing uh, invasive alien species, which is, of course, the management part. Um, until now, there have been uh, sporadically uh, some management projects for IAS in Greece, and not, uh, not under the Ministry of the work of the Ministry of Environment and Energy. Um, there, have been, there have been some important projects on the management of marine species, um, like the lionfish and uh, Lagocephalus celeratus, which uh, you may know how difficult they are to manage. So uh, likely we'll have some projects that have been ongoing uh, dealing with that. And one project on the management of uh, the American mink, Neovision, not Vision, sorry about the typo. And um, uh, what we need to do now is to, based on the uh, scientific work that has been delivered to us, to formulate management plan for uh, the species of union and of natural, national concern. Um, what needs to be done from now on, so, is uh, to activate the scientific committee that has been uh, uh, part of the provisions of the ministerial decision I talked about earlier, um, to legislate the national IAS list. Uh, as I said, it was delivered by the scientific project, and so now it has to uh, be approved by the scientific committee and then uh, legislated. Uh, we need to establish a surveillance system um, 
So what we did uh, as uh, the, the research project that I mentioned, uh, mostly relied on uh, bibliographical evidence and uh, data. And uh, what we need to do is to ensure that uh, uh, we're uh, on the ground, on the field, uh, uh, having a, a, a constant monitoring surveillance system. And we'll have some proposals uh, from the research project, and now we need to put that in place. Uh, and of course, get to the management plans for the priority species at first, and uh, then for the others. And uh, finally, uh, to move on with the raise awareness uh, activities, uh, the Invalis project has been an immense help so far, and we really hope that there will be a follow up to that. Uh, the, the seminars that we had in the, the meetings, uh, the stakeholder meetings that we had through Invalis has helped us immensely so far to see uh, who are the active stakeholders so far and um, get some uh, uh, opinions and some uh, very important approaches on how we should go about um, um, going forward with the, with the management side of the, um, of the policies. And um, this is it, just as a summary, so that you know um, how things are progressing in Greece. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. For your attention. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Nicolás. And there is a question. Great. Uh, would you like to yeah. step forward? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
But uh, your question has to do with the management aspect, which, as I said, is in a very preliminary stage right now. So what that means is that uh, we need specific management plans, uh, management plans for uh, each uh, species that we are that we consider priority species, or uh, management plans uh, that uh, uh, deal with the uh, pathways of introduction. Uh, we do not have these management plans yet. Is the exact next step, uh, as I said, that um, we have to develop. Uh, the legal framework that we have right now uh, can only serve as an ad hoc, uh, let's say, uh, emergency response in cases where we have a reported um, a case of the appearance, for example, of uh, a, a Miocastor uh, in some area of Greece. And we need some uh, rapid response to that. And uh, so the ministerial decision, for example, designates the forestries, which in Greece have a rather more broad uh, a competency area than uh, the name implies. Uh, so um, as a, a first a response, uh, we uh, will deal with that through them. Uh, of course, when it comes to marine species, there is no point at all of designating an authority that will intervene when uh, somebody, uh, for example, detects uh, a, a lionfish. Uh, it's it, it there is no sense in that. Uh, so what we have in place right now is just the ad hoc emergency response. While we will formulate the management plan for each species, and the specific management plan will involve all the uh, necessary, the competent authorities that will have to intervene at each uh, stage of the invasion. Um, so unfortunately, I do not have a, a full. Uh, reply to what you say, we're just working in a ad hoc basis uh, so far. Understand, you are moving to direction uh, to authorities to be responsible, uh, not to landowners, correct? Uh, sorry, can, could you repeat that please? So it seems that you are going to, that responsible will be the list of authorities rather not yes. the land. Uh, uh, the management plan, as we envision it, it will uh, involve, uh, it will be tailored for uh, its uh, species because it's very different to uh, try to manage the island to Saltissima. Uh, on the ground than it is to deal with the uh, Lagocephalus celeratus. So uh, what we envision is that for each um, species, there will be a specifically tailored management plan that will list the authorities that will be needed to be involved in each part of the process. And uh, uh, of course, make um, 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 provisions, have provisions for the participation of the public and uh, decentralized authorities, uh, central government, uh, NGOs and other stakeholders. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any any other questions? And we can move on to the the future ahead in Lom uh, in Lombardy, regional policies and innovative solutions. Yes, from uh, Francesco Bisi. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, I will try to share my screen. Could you see my screen? Yes, you can. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. In the next few minutes, uh, I will describe you uh, which is the policy that uh, uh, Lombard region is adopting to manage uh, invasive alien uh, species. Uh, actually, as uh, everyone, we started from the EU regulation 1143 that uh, state the, the main objectives uh, uh, focusing on prevention, control and uh, eradication. Uh, then we pass through the uh, national legislation, uh, 
uh, that actually follow exactly the EU regulation, except for one important note, and maybe we are uh, different, we have differences uh, from Greece. Uh, in this uh, national legislation, the responsibility of management of the invasive alien species is in charge to region. Okay, so uh, that's why uh, Lombardy region decide to write its own proper uh, regional strategy for the management of invasive alien uh, alien species. Uh, and also, um, actually, at uh, in Italy at national level, there are already the national management plan for each species. Uh, they uh, they need to be approved actually at the moment. So. Uh, for Lombardy region uh, that has got the responsibility to manage uh, IAS uh, on its territory, the first step has been to write down the strategy. I would like to say that the strategy is a changing document uh, in these species and their distribution uh, can vary in space and time. So the document uh, we always be updated. Uh, in these documents, uh, we have four main points. The first one is uh, um, direction on how to collect uh, uh, data from the territory. Indeed, if we want to manage uh, uh, invasive alien species, actually we should know which is the starting point. So there are direction how to monitor the presence of the species. Then the main part of the strategy is the uh, prioritization. Uh, indeed, we want to know how to address the efforts. Uh, all we know that the, there are so many aspects to be uh, managed and uh, the funds, the money are limited. Uh, so we created a method to decide how to address uh, the efforts. Then it's very important taking into account the EU regulation the alert part, so uh, we can find the strategy who is in charge and which is the um, the way to move uh, along the different uh, administrations. Uh, and finally, there are technical parts concerning the management of uh, uh, each uh, species. Well, but how to improve these uh, uh, these strategies? Uh, actually. Uh, Lombardy decided to create a task force dedicated to this topic. Uh, this task force, uh, I would like to uh, underline that is uh, structured within, uh, uh, within um, uh, the Lombardy Biodiversity uh, Observatory. I think this is a very good point because we should always keep in our mind that the EU regulation demand for uh, uh, invasive alien species management, but with the focus to protect biodiversity. So these two elements should be always be linked. And then within the task force, as uh, the colleague said just uh, before me, um, there are differences uh, uh, in the processes uh, uh, for different species. Uh, uh, of course, there are differences between plants and animals because the, the national and the local legislation are very different. Uh, so within this task force, there are two main teams, one, one with uh, experts for the plant part, one with experts for, uh, for the animal part. Then, as I said to you before, uh, the main point of the strategy uh, is the prioritization process. And uh, as you can see from this very, very easy uh, scheme, uh, the first point in charge to the task force is the collection of data and the validation of data. Um, uh, presenters before me uh, underlined the importance of citizens' information, but also information data uh, uh, arriving from uh, uh, local authorities and scientific association. Uh, within the task force, uh, we validate the information. 
and the, the, the process actually try to answer to uh, two main questions. The first one is if the species is new in the Lombardy uh, territory. And the second one is uh, if this, the invasive species report, uh, in the species is, uh, belongs to the uh, EU regulation annexes. Uh, answering to uh, these questions, we can reach uh, at the bottom of, the, of the scheme, very easy scheme, uh, where uh, we can define uh, low priority, uh, medium priority, high priority. So when we decide there is a low priority, actually problem, we don't need to, um, to intervene uh, in, in the territory. Uh, instead, uh, if we think uh, there is a high, high priority, uh, uh, we need to, uh, to have an intervention. Uh, in, uh, in all this part, I would like to underline the two red arrows here that are very important for us. Um, uh, we, we always try to get the feedback uh, from uh, the intervention on the territory. Uh, in, indeed, uh, we, we want to adapt our strategy uh, to, improve, uh, uh, to improve the intervention. Uh, this is very important to change uh, the way to control invasive other species on the territory uh, in case the intervention uh, uh, didn't go as we uh, expected. Uh, last but not least, uh, here we are talking about policies. Until now, I've been talking to you about policies, but there are actors on the territory territory that has to, to do the work, actually. And here in this box, uh, you can see some of them. For example, the managing authorities of the Nat Natura 2000 protected areas, uh, or plant and animal traders, scientific association, local game keepers. What the Lombardy region is trying to do is to uh, train these actors on the, on the territory and uh, to help them to exchange their experiences and their skills. And uh, finally, uh, we know that to, to improve our intervention is fundamental uh, to involve citizens and stakeholders at different levels. So for every intervention, uh, we will plan to have a communication plan and we always have to uh, share information uh, about what we are doing on Lombardy territory. Uh, well, uh, I finish and I thank you for your attention. Um, are there any questions? And I don't see any raised hands, so we can move on with uh, in Valis as boost for a career in patient science from Mr. Ray Luis Reina. Which I change the slides. Um, you change the slides with this one. It's in the computer there. Okay. So I need to you just wait. For okay. Point. Well, thank you. Um, so I am from Civil Vicente from the University of Porto, and these will be probably a different perspective from academic institution. Um, so and this is also a pretty much uh, what I think uh, uh, about this kind of European funding co-funded by European Union through the Interreg Europe. Um, that also, and that can be indeed uh, important, not just uh, for promoting the actions, in this case, uh, to the management uh, of invasive species and invasion science in general, that is a very important issue. So my research group, uh, it's mainly working uh, with invasive species, uh, not necessarily uh, with management actions, but uh, we are more scientists rather than technicians or managers. However, uh, we try to 
to do research that are useful for society. Uh, and so um, this is a pretty much a, a personal account about uh, how important this could be for a, a career of a person that it was in, not initially, but in my in my research group contracted direct uh, by Invalish during almost two years. Uh, so doing a lot of things uh, to to the project, organizing uh, events, promoting the projects, replying to to the to the partners to what you needed to do, but also um, uh, doing specific tasks within the project. For example, we organize we prepared a paper within the project with our Italian colleagues. Uh, the, mainly with Daniel Pagnelli, uh, that explore the expert perceptions of protected areas, uh, vulnerability to biological invasions. So he published this in Journal of Nature Conservation. So this was indeed funded by Invalis. This is a good example, as uh, one of our uh, prior talks also uh, said that. So we do some work. This This work is not just available in a specific country or an institution, but it's also available for the society because it's published somewhere. And the end, most of the times it's free available. Um, but Joanna started to work in my group in another project, more, more or less related with the importance of the pet trade uh, as a, a proxy to study the invasion uh, and the introduction of exotic species, mainly with birds, but uh, this is just uh, one of the examples, could be with plants or other animal groups. And um, so, uh, in invasion science is very important, as you know, though you came mostly from a, a, um, a biological science background. Joanne is a biologist, I'm a forester, but we need to account in invasion science other aspects, other topics, other disciplines, when you are studying or when you are managing um, uh, exotic species, because this has socioeconomic impacts. You need to deal with people, um, people perceptions. Uh, here, Joanna also um, helped me with a master student that did some field work in the Porto main parks, city main parks. We, we replicated uh, a study that uh, our Spanish colleagues in southern Spain, in Seville, did in the urban parks of, of, of Seville. And we adapted this study uh, to Porto because the fauna, both native and non-native, are a little bit different, not too different, but different. Uh, for example, the exotic species are a little bit different. And you ask, what are the perceptions for, for the visitors, both locals and people that came from the nearby areas, or even sometimes foreigners that are visiting the park, what they think about the parakeets that are introduced species. So, because sometimes people, they just like parakeets that in Europe are introduced because they are beautiful, they are different, they are exotic, they are colorful. And uh, in most cases in Europe, you don't have this kind of birds that are more typical for uh, from uh, tropical or subtropical environments. And so we try to understand this more or less social perspective uh, that is very important to deal if you want to do actions that sometimes could be radical, uh, like eradicating exotic species that sometimes people don't like. Um, but you also uh, uh, try to understand in our work, and this was indirectly and was benefited from the Invalis funding, how uh, designing geopolitical scenarios. So we designed geopolitical storylines. So they are theoretical, they are not, uh, they could not exist. How this may be important to understand um, the importance of uh, things like Brexit in the UK recently that affected all European and probably the world, how Trump administration affected the world trade, or for instance, now the war in Ukraine. Uh, we didn't anticipate the war in Ukraine, but to study, we, we try to model it, to analyze how um, political shifts, geopolitical shifts, together with law enforcement in specific, in all the countries, because you may have the same laws, but law enforcement is applied in a different way. They could be more relaxed in some countries and they could be more strength, more uh, in another ones. 
but also so in and trade barriers you may have strong tra tra trade barriers but low uh, law enforcement and you try to understand how this can shape the the path the white path trade and this in the end may influence the the, the species that are here to be introduced on purpose or accidentally and so this is uh, our personal account uh, an institution account, how this kind of European funding could be important indeed, um, in this case for a person uh, that now is uh, contracted by another project, also supported by the Portuguese government, but also for European Union funding. And uh, it's that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And with this, we have reached the, the end of the presentation. If you have any, any questions for the, the, the followers, the participants from the Zoom, no. We can then break for a light lunch. And we hope to see you uh, after that in uh, half an hour for uh, an open discussion. 20 minutes, in 20 minutes. So.
Very, very, very mandatory features with things like that. It's everyone will be able to do. No, no need to worry. Okay. Would you like to also how the more we can fit into the front? Can you hear me? Those joining us from the, the Zoom, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Um, as you can see from your cameras as well, we have changed the, the, the room a bit in order to have this discussion. With, it, with all the participants here today, and with you in in following us from the Zoom. So at any point of the conversation, if you want to join in, you can either raise your hand or just jump into the conversation, and, and we will hear you. So just to recap a bit on the presentation today, we, we listened to all of the, the efforts from the different partners uh, on how to influence policies and how to introduce the subject of uh, IAS into policies, whether they be uh, funding, uh, like, like in Italy, tourism funding opportunities, or in management policies like the Spanish uh, CAP and other case studies, and, and also in Romania and Latvia. And, and we heard about the most prevailing issues, which kept on coming uh, with every presentation, the, the, the issue of um, public awareness, but also awareness in, the, uh, in competent authorities about uh, IAS. The uh, lack of networking between different actors and different stakeholders, and the need to disseminate the scientific knowledge that exists somewhere, but it doesn't reach, it doesn't trickle down to all the, the stakeholders. And throughout your project, the, the, you have tried, most of you have tried to, to tackle these issues, uh, either by networking, creating uh, web portals for the dissemination of uh, the information, registries, uh, having stakeholder events, uh, stakeholder meetings, uh, awareness raising uh, uh, events and disseminating information. And this is the, the way that the project partners try to move uh, these issues forward. However, I would like to open up the, the floor for you who are in the project and those who are joining us from other uh, initiatives and other organizations to see what would be, what do you see as the way forward? What ideas do you, do you think should be put forward in order to tackle the issue of the uh, invasive alien species in the European uh, ecosystems and this is one uh, opportunity to get as many ideas as you can even more so because we listened from the 
from the Joint Secretary that there are funding ahead, which include things, could, in, could include things like uh, the initiatives that you are working on now. So the floor is yours. Any ideas where you think this should go? What needs to be done further down the line? Who would like to go first? And the ones from joining us from the internet, yeah. you can also yeah. join in. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Well, well, I think we have uh, we have uh, a great um, um, the great chance of crossing borders without uh, any barriers uh, at the same time in invasive species. So I think that's a big problem for Europe. And I think we all should be concerned how we get uh, this invasive species in our territory. So um, I think it's, uh, it should be, of course, with a focus on the, on the task and the objective of the biodiversity conservation. In our case, I think uh, the environmental agents um, at regional level, uh, level, I'm talking about the uh, regional level because the management is similar to the Italian. Uh, we have the central one with the uh, general rules and they delegate to at the regional level with uh, our own budget. Um, I think, uh, for the general public, is quite it's good to give them some information uh, to maintain some dissemination campaigns. But the general public, when they go to a river or they go to some other places, it's quite hard to identify if that's a invasive alien species. So, uh, but I think uh, it's a key a key role in this issue is. For our case, is is the environmental agent that they go all around the region, only not only for invasive species or for uh, forestry, for environmental environmental issues. So that they they they, they have they have the, the role of surveillance of this aspect, and I think they can report where they find these alien species or the new alien species, and also because we have a really uh, but problem with a really uh, uh, economical impact in the river with the um, Jacinto um, plant, uh, Mexican plant, uh, um, another another barrier. Uh, this how we ask how these sort of uh, plants they came to they, they arise in, in our region, and most of them because the people bring it without any uh, bad intention, but uh, they merchant with this type of uh, plants. And I think uh, the collaboration with uh, uh, public, um, um, with the police and the, you know, the, the control police, also they, they, they have a important role in the surveillance and the control of uh, um, moving this uh, exotic. I think the Portuguese colleague mentioned about birds. Uh, they seem to be really exotic, and, but they all end uh, uh, meeting a colony in our parks. So I think we should have more. I, I think the first, the first institution, the, the key role is coming from the public institutions. They, they, have, they, they, they have to push. They, got, they need to get to the to the general public, but they have to implement their own mechanisms to, to control. And of course, uh, that requires budget. Do you agree that uh, the public is needs to be involved? I can see you nodding there. Yes? Yes, I agree. Uh, because it's to the public is not involved. We need to do some actions it will be sometimes difficult to explain and it will be difficult for people to accept if you need to take some drastic measures. And this is happening already in Europe, not just in Europe. And sometimes also by natural consequence, local authorities they decide to remove some species. I'm just talking about uh, people do not accept that this is really difficult. But even for the scientific uh, the, 
many of us want to like measure observations sometimes why not in abundance what is the best thing we need to do because sometimes you know here for example in Athens there are some species, there are at least three species of parakeets in Tuvalu the long parakeet, the world bringing parakeet, and another species that is similar to the world bringing parakeet that are spread all over the, the main parts of the city, but probably they are not taking actions. And in the same situation, we suffer with the countries, in my countries, not every country. We notice like in England, in Spain, in Belgium, they are trying to do something, at least in some cities. But it's not, uh, it depends pretty much on local or regional authorities, rather than from the central state. And maybe we need more coordinated policies, including from the European Union. Yeah. Yeah. Coordinated policies and participation from the public, uh, involvement and awareness raising from the public. Any other ideas? Uh, yes, please. My name is Mitos Gletos. I am the NGO sector, the Hellenic Society for the Protection of Nature. And uh, of course, I would like to congratulate the, the project partners. It was very interesting. Uh, I would like to follow what uh, was said now. In order to involve uh, the public, uh, the wider public, but also the NGOs or maybe possible citizen scientists, I think that we need to have uh, public lists or checklists, or to make to make them more well known. For example, for the plants, we have this very good edition, and at the end of the edition, there's a checklist of alien plants. I do not know if this is uh, uh, available on the internet. Yes, yes. I, think, I think it can be. But for example, if it was available on the internet. Maybe uh, such a list which should be dynamic because they, <laughs> they do not remain constant. Uh, such such a such a ah, it's already available. Yes. It's a project, a product of the project. I think it's a byproduct. It should be made uh, more well known. It was here. And possibly, sorry, it was here. Just it was supported by the project. Yeah, because I think that the, the, the other checklist of the vascular plants of this is available on the internet. Mm -hmm. And additionally, similar lists, uh, for example, with, with the birds, as we mentioned, or uh, reptiles or other uh, species of flora and fauna, should be made widely known, not just to the wider public, but also to specialists or half specialists, as we are in the NGO sector. We, we need to know them. So not only just disseminating the results and, and, and these lists, but also trying to communicate that these lists exist. There should be a portal somewhere where yeah. we can consult. Yeah, it's yeah. one of the actions. It is one of the actions. Yeah. <laughs> it was mentioned, but I could not report yeah. right now. So any efforts towards that would be a good step forward. They would be very appreciated by yeah. us. Person, would you like to, to say something more about that? Um, the portal? Sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah. uh, I think uh, public involvement is very, very important as uh, in the monitoring, let's say, monitoring. Uh, very important role is played by citizen science. So, mm -hmm. observations. If people know, no species, they can observe it. Also, scientists can make some methodology in control of observation. And uh, if people know which species species should be, then it's a way to collect more data. Yes, it's very important. So it's also a crucial factor. Yeah, so, citizen science, yes. very good. In order to give feedback as well to the scientists, so well, it's it helps with the monitoring. Feedback is good, but uh, if you decide and uh, elaborate the methodology how to include observations in the national monitoring system, so I think it's financial. Anyone else? Yeah. Okay, I can have a seat on this. Um, I'm Christiana. Uh, thank you, Andrea, 
inviting us and thank you all for being here. Um, I work um, mostly on uh, public awareness uh, and public education information about the alien species. But the most important thing uh, is to make them curious about alien species. Because uh, even if we tell them that, uh, I don't know, it's something it's happening with our biodiversity, some of them, okay, I don't care. I have more important problem, problems than uh, alien species. So I think the most important thing about the public is make them curious, starting from the early ages. Uh, and I think one of the nicest thing uh, about making them curious about the, our biodiversity is um, encourage them to use applications. Uh, one of the applications that we use in Romania working with kids, uh, it's iNaturalist. I think you maybe know it. Um, for me, it's important because it's a global database and uh, I was talking with my colleagues about this. Um, we are trying to make each state is trying to make an uh, individual database. And after this, we will try to put them together because we need this information. So I think one of the things that we have to do is to collaborate because networking is also very important in this uh, aspect, is to make an integrated database, even if it's global, because it's most easy, it's the most easiest way to access this information and we can encourage the public to use this database and we can, um, the scientists can come here uh, in this database and validate the uh, photos, the information that are collected there. And after this, we all can have access to use this database. If uh, every state is making his unique database that you, they use um, different aspects when we um, actually collect the data from the field, then it will be very hard to put them together. This is my, my opinion. Um, and um, the public also um, can collaborate with us. They can understand why. Uh, to make them curious, uh, by my experience, if there's uh, any health aspect involved in this, the human health, they are very receptive. If uh, now uh, in Romania we have a problem issue with Ambrosia, Artemisifolia, so it's an allergenic plant, and we have uh, an extended um, area with this uh, species. So um, when uh, in August, September, when this um, it's blooming. is blooming, yes, thank you. Um, the allergies are more frequent and the people are more receptive to uh, understand what is an alien species and why it's important. So also we can um, use some moments I don't know any species have its own um, specific. So we can use these aspects to use them when we talk with the public. So you do to design basically a campaigns, targeted campaigns for yes. the public, gather all the information using apps and the new technology. And I like what you said to have a global uh, that the database, because as Miguel said from uh, Spain, it's uh, the, the same way that the invasive species, alien species do not know any borders, we should not know any borders, and your <laughs> database, you think it, it should be borderless as well. It's, it's a nice, ties nicely with the rest. Anything else? If I may say, uh, continuing to what you said earlier, I think it is very important, uh, the creation of the database as we have mentioned already. Uh, maybe in first place, just the creation of a European database because the most certain thing 
we know is that we sure do have some common uh, invasive species. Uh, so I think it's important to have a, a database so that we can report same species or we can exchange experiences uh, about how can we come confront the problem. So networking not only in the database but also in the control and management of species. Very nice. But just for a remark, I think I'm going to this. So, in fact, we now have a very good database worldwide. It's the yes. GP that compiles information from the provider for this as well. Yes, but from the bird, on the, on the birds where specific birds, it's from the corner of the University of the State of New York, most birds report all the methods that they have to be report to GP. Which will be in six months delay. Mm -hmm. So, and now, Cornell University, in the particular recently for the exotic species, they do not report all the species. They introduce the species, but unless they are naturalized, the they, they will be ideal for the system. But they, they change this policy in order to, for the community, not well. It was in Athens we reported the species. We don't, we don't know. If this is established or not, or it is just an early very record. So this is changing and very, very important tools and database for this. So I don't think we need new methods. Not new, but uh, new ways to share them and to make them I don't know this is very good though, has a lot of errors because with the smartphone you can take pictures. Yeah. Uh, the best quality you can. And then after there are uh, like a reference system that you can evaluate if the species is not correct or if the, the, the machine learning model that is behind the system uh, is able to identify the species. So I'm doing this audience, uh, even for groups that I don't know very well. Uh, in, in Athens, here and yesterday, I did some field work here around that report the single species. It's, everybody can do it, it's, it's free. Just need it some time with the smartphone. Yeah, and basically new ways to to use them within the within your projects or within your initiatives. It's if it's there, it's just a, a different way of using all this knowledge that exists. And that was was one of the issues as well. There there is knowledge somewhere. There is there are databases. There are data, but it doesn't reach. The, the stakeholders or the actors where it should reach, right? Very, very interesting. Yes, yeah, uh, speaking about reaching the public, I think I'm uh, a scientist and also like NGOs and uh, uh, as a facilities, they need to use more social media uh, because uh, it's easier for human brain to consume, like, you know, like more stupid information, so we need to uh, give that uh, smart information in a kind of stupid way, uh, like uh, <laughs> I like that. and uh, so on, because uh, it really works, I think, because it's it's hard to read book, it's hard to search in a database, uh, and uh, people just need to consume information. Stupid way. I yeah. Smart information in a stupid Smart way. Information is stupid way. Very well said. <laughs> yes, uh, I want to add. Uh, I think uh, perhaps avoiding stupid things uh, and understanding what an alien species uh, mean. We should address education in schools, not only universities. In Romania, on uh, the Faculty of Biology, we learn about alien species, but just uh, a little bit of information. But um, if we would address uh, the problems about alien species, because they are with us and they will stay with us, mm -hmm. um, I believe uh, from the early ages we can um, learn our children to uh, know, to recognize, to um, understand what an alien species 
is um, comparing to a native species, what it does, um, what are the dangers uh, that this uh, species uh, represents in uh, our countries. And um, because we all, we all talk about uh, sci in scientific ways, we all have uh, these databases that we use, we all have um, applications on uh, mobiles, but uh, uh, um, not all the people, not the general public are aware and are uh, and know how to use these. And there is always need for scientific uh, sci scientists to validate this information. And um, we had in a um, uh, botanical garden of Eucharist a small um, event and uh, we had uh, also a lot of children that uh, were interested in alien species, animals, and plants also. And uh, um, from, uh, I don't know, uh, 20, 40 species that we presented, they recognized only a few of them. Trachemis uh, scripta, because uh, it's a pet. Um, some uh, ambrosia, because uh, it's uh, allergenic and uh, people are suffering from this. And uh, um, some species that we grow in the garden, and that was it. And this is the knowledge of the general public. So I believe uh, introducing courses in, uh, in smaller classes, it should be a plus for, uh, for addressing this subject invasive. And alien species are actually not invasive alien species because not all alien species are invasive. Uh, it's confusing sometimes. Mm -hmm. These uh, terms are confusing for the general public. So education, both in the university, but also in the younger. Yes. Younger. I was, uh, is anyone from the internet? Have we, has anyone stayed with well, us? I think uh, just what she said about the education in in primary schools, of course, if they learn biology, they can also learn what are the invasive species. And also, I think it's kind of uh, prevention, prevention and also uh, how to uh, treat, treat that. I think it, that's a good idea uh, to be. And also, I, I insist that this is becoming a a general common problem for the European project. So I think it should be getting more interest from the Commission because it has no sense to have um, 27 countries with different approaches in this because it's just a common problem. Perhaps this sort of a project is the initiation of a starting point for uh, bigger approaches. Yes, it's a, it's a good uh, opportunity since you are here from all this, uh, from the different countries and also from the German Secretariat to, to, to get all this information down and try to influence uh, European uh, policies as well. Um, I have a question. We are talking about mostly about species that exist or are white, wildlife and they have, but how, what about the species that we introduce, I mean, how, how did many of them, some of them, they flew or they swam up the Swiss Canal as it's uh, commonly said, but other species, how did they end up, ended up here? Did some of them ended up in, in Europe, just for example, in plants or, um, Landscaping for the gardens. Like illegally. illegally. I think illegally. Ill no, no, illegally. Some of them. Illegally. 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 Oh, so it's not just commercial uh, no, use, but it's also illegal. No, they are. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is, let's say, in the case of Portugal. In the past, uh, the, the, the forest 
So this is introduced the cashier trees of strong species for the for edges, sometimes even around the facilities uh, across the country, but not the community, but they are spread around most of the country. They are seriously not in the top because they vary from uh, this in the north from not too cold well in most of the areas and a lot of rain. And uh, it's a perfect uh, climate for them. It's, they can resist to a certain cold in most cases. They have enough them and they have a lot of rain. And so and they are resistant to wildfires. So they can they can deal their ground from wildfires and the natives don't. Uh, so this is just for experiment sometimes. It's for landscaping, for in the case of us, in the birds, it's mainly due to the paper, yeah. both legal and illegal. So that's it. Yeah. Thanks. Um, my name is Vasiliki Fusopolitu. I work at the uh, Ulandris National History Museum, uh, actually the, the branch which is in Thessaloniki, the Greek part of Wetland Center. Uh, my organization is responsible for the monitoring of lakes, for the national monitoring of lakes in, throughout Greece. So me and my colleagues travel to uh, all the uh, mainland and uh, some uh, big islands. So we come across very often um, in the, uh, to invasive alien species, uh, which are thrown from uh, pet shops and uh, aquaria from citizens. That's why we believe that uh, awareness raising in small children and their parents, uh, maybe, um, can have a, a, a very crucial role in the prevention of this uh, phenomenon, which is the, the, the most uh, important part, because once an invasive alien species is established, is uh, almost uh, it's really difficult, if not impossible, to eradicate and control. So um, a, a great effort should be put there in, in prevention, so the public can act uh, both as uh, an educated uh, public, so um, it won't spread or buy invasive alien species, keep in their houses and then uh, throw away in the lake because they feel sorry for the little pet, so they, they wanted to leave. And on the other hand, it can act through applications, uh, e-applications and uh, uh, education as an early warning system, so uh, it can um, inform the competent authorities uh, for uh, uh, the, the spread of, of the species of concern. Excellent. Yeah, so education both for not only for recognizing the uh, yeah. alien reporting on the but reporting and also not more responsible. Uh, Pet choices. Let's this say. is what you see all the time in Crete, in a Natura 2000 site, Lake Guna, if I remember correctly. We have seen American uh, turtle, the American uh, water turtle, Trachem scripta, uh, some uh, aquatic plants, macrophytes, which are all uh, plants of, from aquarium, aquariums, and uh, also the American frog. So, yeah. Uh, Asian koi, so fish. Yes. Very nice. Yeah. And I think um, it's very important to use visual materials mm -hmm. uh, because um, I also had this issue. Okay, you are talking about the list. I see here a lot of names. I have no idea what this means. So I, uh, they need visual materials that they're very clear so they can identify the species. Uh, let me just, I'm sorry, just uh, completing this, as you said, uh, I, I think it's very important, not only having the information, but how you, you spread the information, how you pass it to, to your, uh, to the others, to, that you want to, to inform them, to get them educated, to raise awareness. It is very important. So we have to find the, the optimal way to pass the information because it's nice when we are having discussions and uh, we use the terms we that we we are related to the species and we research them and we are involved with them 
but uh, for the common citizen, it's very difficult. I think it's important to, to find a way to pass information easily. As as you said, it's yes, smart yeah, information, information in a strict way. Uh, green biologists should uh, more cooperate with white biologists and, for example, with neurobiologists and psychologists because they know how human brain works. They know how to put this necessary information in the human brain in uh, many ways like we don't know. Because uh, if we uh, teach uh, students in school about uh, species, okay, uh, I guess Two students will hear the teacher and other will, okay, I don't need it now. Maybe I will need it later, but if I need it later, I will uh, read about this. And this information is not rich. So as, as your other colleague said, that you need to have design campaigns, targeted campaigns in a certain way, in a way that it's easy for the, for the public or your target group to understand, whether it's with photos, whether it's with uh, applications with ease of access. And I think it's really hard for biologists and other scientists because they just don't understand how other people can't understand such a simple information. But in the most cases, it's not simple information. It's like, like uh, another universe. Uh, for other people, and so that's why we need to cooperate. As, as I say, I work in public participation and community engagement, and I always say when I work, especially with scientists, is you you haven't asked your target group how they want to be informed. It's it's one crucial thing to make the link. What do they want to see in order to understand what you're trying to tell? Probably for the Kids, we have to do songs, stories, yes. drawing, yes. and take a look at picture and, and actually them. showing them this is the plant, this is the animal. Look how it looks, the differences, feel it, smell it. So, uh, not only just uh, see pictures, not only just see uh, this uh, plants, but actually go into the field and see the species. Yeah. Getting in contact with, with nature. Perhaps the planet of botanical gardens can be involved and have small collections mm -hmm. of alien species, or just take a trip to uh, the city. We in Athens, we actually saw, oh, I, um, I love to say Rantissima, Akachia, Amaranthus, and I, I actually saw. Uh, What's Actually, the most of most of the <laughs> species that uh, are present. In so another thing to consider is your stakeholders, because here you go. Botanical gardens are your stakeholders as well, and the the municipal gardens are your stakeholders. The municipal gardens. So yeah, and how to involve them. Well, well, what I say also that we have a really. Uh, impact uh, bad impact for example for agriculture in some invasive species which has a really so i think they are some of the other stakeholders because they are many of them on the land and they can identify and they can uh aware or they can in, inform about the the, the influence or the appearance of new species or of some declaration of because I think they are in the land always. So that's a good, another one. I have to leave and I would like to be there. It's a pity. And uh, thank you for the organization. Uh, this, it was great. And uh, I wish you the, the best. Okay. So I have to thank say bye. You. Bye. 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 The interesting uh, agriculture, another stakeholder, another major stakeholder in the. In, in this issue, ah, someone else, someone else from the from the Zoom. Anyone else here? Yes, I will have a question. Um, I'm wondering how um, 
um, you manage the administrative part and the human resource that is involved in um, the departments that uh, have this uh, these issues or this in their tasks to manage invasive alien species. Um, for us in Romania, it's a um, provocative. Let's say provocative. Okay. Rough um, for <laughs> Yes. At least they are. That's true. To manage this administrative part uh, with authorities, uh, with other institutions that uh, have this task to identify uh, or manage uh, in the civilian species. How do you manage it? You want to say that in Greece, this is starting now. Okay. Active management. It's not yet clear which authority will do what exactly. But it's, it came out from our stakeholder meetings that uh, it is very important to not only to educate the general public, but also the authorities which will uh, be involved. Because there is a lack of education even in, uh, among the authorities, especially at the local or municipal level. Mm -hmm. That could be a project on its own. Yes. Try to find who has the responsibility and the agenda to, to deal with this. And I would say just, uh, I might add just to complete what I'm passing. Uh, there is a lack of awareness, but also lack of coordination and communication between every authority. So I think this is another issue we have to face here in Greece. Um, hopefully, I think it's very important to acknowledge that we have done many steps. A uh, few years before the environment, maybe the, the, the awareness, uh, the knowledge around the invisible species was, was not even close to what we have today, where we are. But there is also, um, so many work to be done still that um, we need to wait, I think. <laughs> <laughs> One step at a time. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> One step at a time. I would like to ask you know, what was the biggest problem that you had as partners to, to face during the management and maybe the implementation of your action plan? What was the restrictions in your country? For each and every one. The shock. The shock. <laughs> Let's start from the practical problems. I, I can tell you for me what's the administrative part. That's why I was not. <laughs> I, I, I heard that uh, many of you changed like the, your. Um, the role of your of your um, authorities changed before uh, or during the implementation of the of the project. Is that correct? I understood correct. Your mandate changed. Yes. Yes. For, yes. For instance, yes. Um, yes. It's usual actually. It's a common thing yeah. in our country. And from our point of view, the project that we developed uh, since uh, 2019 uh, and uh, this uh, year, uh, the project uh, actually finishes. Uh, let's say uh, the, the part uh, of inventorying and uh, mapping the alien uh, species in uh, Romania at national level, deriving from the regulation 1143. Um, the problems that we are confronted with were uh, only about uh, administration, authorities, lacking of collaboration, uh, lacking of interest. Um, the part of inventory went very fine. We have a uh, big uh, base data, very important uh, for all uh, groups of uh, species, plants, animals, uh, 
And uh, the main issues uh, were those, lack of collaboration and interest of the authorities. Um, they seem to have uh, interest, they seem to have, yes, we will help, yes, we will, uh, will, we invo will be involved, yes, yes, give us your information, give us all your knowledge, and we'll see about yeah. what we will do. That was uh, our domain. Our domain. Uh, Actually, our domain is because uh, also the human resources are uh, respected. Yes, so yeah, it's very hard for them to take all the information and manage to uh, administrate it and put it in action because they don't have enough human resources that are prepared for this. And also everything that we have to do as an administrative part, it's very provocative. Yeah. It's, we need time. And this problem about uh, invasive or alien species and invasive alien species are not well known. Uh, they do not understand actually what it means and why it harms us. Uh, they don't understand that these species are introduced by forestry, by agriculture, by horticulture, by uh, uh, Tourist. Ornamental tourists, yes, the tourists uh, are also a big part of um, in uh, in uh, our country. Uh, a species arrived, uh, a species of um, uh, union concern, um, would just arrived, and we uh, actually identified it uh, in uh, 2018. We published, and um, we don't know how it came. In our country. So species are always, always, always coming. And um, this, um, this I believe it's, it's uh, the main uh, part that the, the people, the general people, are not very, very aware of what these species mean, what uh, are, are they doing, and why we should eliminate them, why we should control them. But even the municipalities, they call this that a responsible. Yes, yes, sometimes. Yes. We have a law for only one species in Romania. Yeah. Ambrosia happens in oil. Because it causes the most. Because it causes yes, the most problems. Yeah. Actually, although we have a law, it's, it's very hard to be implemented. Yeah. We and the know, problem remains we, we, about law and implementation. We know it very well here in Greece. We have <laughs> very good environmental legislation. Hmm. The implementation is not so <laughs> up to speed. And um, anything else? Anything else you want to speak us? Maybe from Nadia. I don't know if we have something to add or Dr. Reino. Okay. So, Anything you to add on this? No. Well, um, how many have stayed with us so far? Nine. Nine. Would you like us to, with that, to close the, the session, the meeting? And uh, thank you very much for all of you there in in the internet watching us from your screens. Thank you very much <laughs> to the people in the room. Um, on my part, I would like to thank Neka for inviting me to coordinate this meeting and uh, I want to wish you all a very pleasant evening. Thank you. Thank you. And good to be with your projects for the future. So, thank you. Would you like to say a few words? Yeah. <laughs> this is the protocol part now because you know I get emotional and uh, anxious every time and I'm not going to this. But uh, I'll be I'll wrap it up fast. Uh, I really want to thank you for coming and I really want to, to say that I'm very glad to finally see your faces. It's nice always to put a name on, on to put a face on the name. 
Um, I have thanked my colleagues and I will thank them like forever because they have been, they have stood by me since day one that I initiated this project. Um, I'm so proud that we as Valleys have come so far that we made things happen. We made this great networking and uh, the exchange of experiences and knowledge and everything. I find that it would be nice to have an advice too, maybe. I don't know. Um, thank I want to thank also the everyone participating on them and watching us and contributing to this event. Our experts, NECA, uh, our stakeholders, Jeez. all of you. Jeez. Yes, <laughs> for <laughs> making the magic happen yes. sometimes in the difficult times, especially. Thank you for the support. That's it, and I hope to see you all again, <laughs> maybe in another meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, would you like to take a, a photo all together? Oh, yes. A family photo? <laughs> <laughs>